pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Council. We have no special presentations this evening. So, Madam Clerk, let's go. Oh, gosh, jumped right over time. All right. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Thank you. All right. Madam Clerk, now down to ordinances on final read, please. An ordinance to amend ordinance number 13334, known as the fiscal year 2018-2019 budget ordinance, so as to appropriate $300,000 from the Department of General Government to the United Way of Greater Chattanooga. Move approval, Mr. Chair. Chair. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Thank you, B, please. An ordinance to amend Chattanooga City Code Part 2, Chapter 38, Zoning Ordinance, so as to rezone property located at 1005 Beeson Drive from R2 Residential Zone to RTZ Residential Townhouse Zero Lot Line Zone, subject to certain conditions. Pleasure of the Council. Move approval. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. All right, move down to ordinances on first read. Madam Clerk. A, hey, please. An ordinance closing and abandoning a portion of the 1200 block of East 28th Street as detailed on the attached map subject to certain conditions. Councilman Bird. Uh, All right. Got a, Got a motion and a second to table this item. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Thank you. A, hey, please. An ordinance amending Chattanooga City Code Part 2, Chapter 35, Article 7, Pedal Carriage and Rickshaws, Division 1, Section 35, 241, Definitions. All right. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Thank you. All right. Move to resolutions 7A, please. A resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a license agreement with the state of Tennessee and substantially the form attached for a 10-year renewable license and no cost for permission to use and maintain a multi-use path underneath the Interstate 75 bridge over Chickamauga Creek. Councilwoman Burrs. Second. All right, got a motion and a second, Councilman Bird. Okay. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Opposed is nay. Thank you. B, please. A resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a license agreement with the state of Tennessee and substantially the form attached for a 10-year renewable license at no cost to use and maintain a multi-use path underneath the C.B. Robinson Bridge. Councilman Bird, followed by Councilwoman Coonrod. Okay. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed is nay. Thank you. C, please. A resolution authorizing the administrator for the Department of Economic and Community Development to apply for to apply and accept if awarded the Blue Cross Healthy Place Grant sponsored by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee Health Foundation BCBS for an amount not to exceed seven million dollars. All right, I got Councilman Gilbert followed by Councilwoman Coonrod. Motion approved. Second. All right, Councilman Bird, you good? All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Opposed is nay. Thank you. All right, Madam Clerk, next on our agenda are ECD short-term vacation rentals, and we will hear these cases as regular zoning cases, so if you wouldn't mind, let's please read the first item. D, please. A resolution approving short-term vacation rental application number 18 STVR00059 for property located at 643 Hamilton Avenue. Thank you. Is the applicant present? Is there any opposition present? All right. The applicant has seven minutes. Thank you all so much for the opportunity to present. Um, my wife, Carol, and I have been coming to Chattanooga since 2003 when our son started attending Covenant College. Since our early days of visiting Chattanooga, we have considered it as a place that we would like to spend our later years 
My son Tim and his wife Ellie have settled in Chattanooga, and we very much want to spend more time here uh, visiting our two, uh, them and our two fantastic grandchildren, Will and Franny. If you guys approve our request to do short-term vacation rental, Tim will be the property manager. So visiting for extended periods has been tough. You know, uh, my father-in-law lives with us, so when we come down, we have to rent two hotel rooms. You know, just a week can cost thousands of dollars. That's why we decided to buy a home in Chattanooga with the intention uh, over the next few years of becoming full-time residents. In the interim period, we would like to generate some income through short-term vacation rental to help pay for the taxes and upkeep expenses of the property. It is not in our best interest to rent this home to people who would trash the property or be a detriment to our neighbors. We want to live here someday and have good relationships with our neighbors. So I'd like to have my son Tim sure. continue. Uh, thank you also for the opportunity to speak. Uh, I will be the one managing uh, the Airbnb property. I've lived in Chattanooga for uh, more than a decade now and uh, just really uh, I've managed an Airbnb, Airbnb property in the past and one of the things I like about uh, that website is it provides an opportunity to vet all the potential tenants that would be live that be staying in the property. Uh, there's a rating system that allows us to vet them as well as them to vet us as landlords uh, for that short-term vacation rental. And um, uh, one of the things that we will make sure to do, we've read some of uh, the opposition to, to this, and one thing we'll make sure to do with every uh, tenant is let them know that it is a one-way street going up uh, Hamilton Avenue. That's really important. They can only park in the designated parking areas that we give them. Uh, that's uh, in our application for the short-term vacation rental. Uh, that This is a residential area, and it's a quiet area, and we'd like for the noise to be kept at a minimum. We want to be respectful for, to our neighbors. And like my dad said, we, uh, you know, hopefully, sooner rather than later, they can move down here and be in that property full time. And so we uh, want to make sure that the renters for this short-term vacation rental will be taking care of the property very well. We don't want the property values to go down and are, are not interested in uh, our, our own investment dropping in any way as well. So uh, really um, want to um, want to let any opposition know that we will be as careful as possible with who rents uh, rents this house, and hopefully it is for a short time so that my family can come down and be with their grandbabies. So, thanks. Thank you. Anything else? Right. Nope. Is that it? All right, thank you. We'll see. Thanks, Sean. Opposition. We have nine minutes allotted to the opposition if they would like to make statements. Good afternoon. I'm Mike Newton. I live uh, directly across the street from this home uh, with my wife and two daughters. Um, my, my main objection with this with this uh, uh, property being a short-term rental is really from a safety perspective. Uh, this is a very unique roadway structure. Uh, when you turn right onto this road from uh, North Market Street, it's two-way. Then, then the road narrows and it becomes one-way. Uh, you go up on top of the hill, it's one-way. Then you go down the other side, it's, it, it's one-way until it goes two-way again. So you have two-way uh, traffic and this middle section is just one-way. You've got a steep hill on either side so you can't see over the crest of the hill either way. Uh, on top of this is the single family residence and then you've got condos followed by uh, apartments so you've got a lot of traffic coming through here and there's a lot of people that have uh, cars there's no on-street parking there and there's no shoulders they have put a sidewalk up at the top of the uh, of the hill but that's, what that's done is effectively narrowed that roadway up there. Unless you have designated parking up there, there's no place to park. <coughs> Invariably, though, people are parking on the street, and it further narrows that roadway. I've been there 11 months, and I've seen two accidents up there. One of them involved the city of Chattanooga garbage truck. 
so it's, you know, you know, there's an issue with these service trucks being able to get through, especially these bigger vehicles, especially when people are parking in the street. So that's a problem. And then we have uh, 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 a lot of people that are flying up and down that street. So much so that uh, North Hamilton Avenue, they just the city just put in speed humps. I wish they'd do it on the other side because we've got traffic. That same traffic that's flying down North Hamilton is coming over on our section too and flying over. So you've got narrow streets, you've got traffic that's going quickly, and then you've got limited sight lines. And then on top of that, you've got people coming up from Woodland Avenue, which c turns into Hamilton, uh, where it's two-way, beginning that one-way street. And I, t I tell you, just about every day, I see somebody going the wrong way on that street. And that's really dangerous when you've got narrow roads, there's no place for two cars to go by. I think the city made this one way because there's just no way for two cars to pass each other. And I've got some pictures. Coming up the road, there's the narrow area. So uh, how this affects, uh, from my perspective, how this affects us from uh, living there and having renters come in, um, it's a pretty good sized house that they're trying to rent out. Uh, it's multiple bedrooms. Uh, you're going to have uh, uh, a number of people there. Th their area, they've got maybe two uh, parking spots, uh, you know. And invariably, from my experience, when people are renting houses, there's gatherings, there's parties, and then you're not going to have room for these people to park. They're going to park in the street and further create uh, hazards for us and other people that walk on there. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've seen people scatter from the streets because some cars flying over, but they, they're unable to walk on the sidewalk because somebody's parking there. So it's, it's a re really unique kind of geography up there that creates problems for everybody. And I've got two daughters and I tell them every day, watch out for cars. Watch out for people. I go, I'd stay on the sidewalk as much as you can, but they can't stay on the sidewalk the whole time because people are parking on them. If you have a lot of renters coming in, uh, parking on a street, uh, it, I think it's going to create problems, particularly because these people don't know the area. They don't know the one-way nature of the street. They don't know the parking problems. They don't know the speeding problems. I think it's just going to create more problems down the road and create safety issues for not only my family, but other people that are traveling and walking on that road. And there's a lot of children and families that walk up and down that road in strollers. I've seen them have to run out of the way with strollers. I don't think it's appropriate. I don't think this is going to uh, help that situation. So re respectfully, we, we oppose it. It's not a personal thing but I think it's just a safety issue. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Mark Stefano. I'm the property owner of uh, 639 Hamilton, which is right next door to this property that's uh, requesting the uh, vacation rental application. Um, some of the reasons for my opposition, uh, I live in a new community there, there's four houses, it's next-gen homes that was developed uh, by uh, uh, by the city of Chattanooga, and, and uh, uh, it's, it's a company that's promoting sustainability in the area. Uh, so there's some safety issues there I have some concerns for. I mean, first of all, the housing is seven to eight feet. Of, uh, there's, uh, there's an alleyway about seven or eight feet that's dividing each of the locations. Uh, some possible safety issues there are fire and sanitation issues. Additionally, there's no property manager on site, security to monitor rental activities such as loud noise inadequate parking, and strangers in the neighborhood. Vacation properties may attract the wrong kind of clientele that could subject neighbors to loud and unruly short-term tenants, 
as reported in many municipalities, rental properties at times are not maintained to the same standard that a homeowner that's living in the property might, might uh, maintain that property. We want Hamilton Avenue to be considered a safe and desirable area for prospective homeowners to consider. We believe short-term rental properties would be deemed as undesirable and be considered as a negative. Additionally, potential noise complaints made to law enforcement may put an, un <clears throat> excuse me, an unnecessary burden on the already very busy police department. Parking and traffic concerns, Hamilton Avenue is very narrow, one-way street. The residents are already having to deal with traffic moving, excessive high rates of speed, and coming down Hamilton Avenue the wrong way. It's really dangerous. Based on these issues, there is no room for additional cars to park on the street. The additional traffic and parking constraints that would come from a short-term vacation and rental property on Hamilton would enhance the major traffic safety problems for the current residents and their children. Protecting our investment is another concern. Many of the new homeowners on Hamilton Avenue have, been, have uh, made substantial investments in building new homes for their land and, their, and building the property. In addition to our property and, and investment, we, we, pay a, we pay a substantial amount of annual property taxes there. Granting a short-term vacation rental permit in this instance could adversely affect our property values and discourage potential new homeowners from purchasing or building new homes on Hamilton Avenue. <coughs> Excuse me. So in conclusion, many municipalities across the United States are dealing with short-term vacation rental property concerns. And the, impact is having, and, and the impact is having on residential areas. This is a very complex matter that needs to be studied thoroughly and be given uh, detailed consideration. Due to the nature of the location of the home and the special circumstances I've outlined in the last few minutes for our street, I respectfully request that the application for short-term rental permit for the owners of 643 Hamilton be denied. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, the applicant has a couple minutes to respond. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Council Members. My name is John Anderson with Grant Comelinka and Harrison PC, and I represent Mr. Mala in, in relation to his request for an STVR at 643 Hamilton. I want to mention a couple of things in rebuttal as it relates to this. And looking at the road, uh, Council, it looks like the road meets the, uh, it appears to be very well marked and meets the uniform traffic signs requirement, and I presume the city is, it, it acknowledges that manual and uses that manual to uh, sign as it relates to one way and, and those sorts of matters. Additionally, uh, the safety concerns that, that have been enumerated by both uh, uh, parties in opposition exist for all of the uh, property owners. You've heard Mr. Mala say this is gonna be a, a place in residence for them. You know, as a, as a grandparent as well, I certainly understand their desire to come down here several times a year, be close to their uh, son and to the children and to be able to see them as often as possible. As a matter of fact, they were up there this weekend, had the uh, grandchildren, had a birthday party. I'm sure they had a number of cars out there. So it sounds like what the concern is, you can't have it for gathering, you can't have it for parties, uh, you can't, uh, the road isn't very well marked, it's unsafe, and, and all of that appears to be true reg regardless of whether it's an STVR. Uh, respectfully, I, I don't believe there's anything that was brought forward to uh, deny this permit uh, that would be particular to this use. Uh, we'd respectfully request uh, that the council approve this. One of the uh, members in opposition indicated a substantial investment in the Mahalas, um, the Mahalas have probably in excess of $400,000 in this house. So it's, it's clearly an investment they want to protect. They're going to be here to see their grandchildren on a regular basis. They want to use this as an opportunity to defray some of the cost to be able to move here at some point in the future. Uh, we request that you approve the application. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Bailey, could you come up here for a second? How you doing? I'm good, Mr. Good. Councilman. Good. Um, this road, I've, I've, I've been on this road before, and of course, with these applications, I visited the area a couple of different times. I think the one-way markings are pretty good. Um, 
I do see people going the wrong way on that road quite a bit, but um, are there no parking signs along there? That's what I'm not sure about as far as keeping people off, off the streets parking because it is a rather narrow place. I don't know off the top of my head, Mr. Councilman, I'd have to send our staff out there. I'd go out there and look myself. Okay, yeah, reg regardless of this vote, it, it sounds like something needs to be looked at and done. Certainly. One way or the other. Okay, thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. Good, Councilman? Yes. I see no further lights. So at this time, let's pleasure the council. Second. All right, no further lights. I've got a motion and a second to approve. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Thank you. E, please. A resolution approving short-term vacation rental application number 18-STVR-00060 for property located at 720 Old Dallas Road. All right. Is the applicant present? Okay. Is there any opposition present? Yes. All right. I'd like to invite the applicant up this time. I have seven minutes to present. I'd like to thank the council for uh, hearing this matter. Um, the, uh, my name is Rex Yanis, and I uh, um, purchased this um, property in um, intention to use it as an STVR for a few years and then have my uh, uh, daughter and her husband and my grandchild move in there in probably five, five or six years. Um, there, is, uh, um, there is some opposition to this. I just want you to know that the, um, so I purchased the property in April of 18. Uh, haven't rented it out since then, being, staying in compliance with all the, uh, the um, uh, laws and uh, restrictions. The, um, there was, um, in the uh, letters, there was an issue about, that they mentioned about parking also. So the, uh, the driveway in the, in the property has room for four cars and there's a two car garage. The, um, and so in, a, in accordance with the, um, the ordinances for STVR, the, uh, the maximum number of people that can stay there is six, and typically six people wouldn't be in more than four cars on the average for, for an STVR. Um, the, um, there is, uh, I did talk to the, um, um, the owner that's right next door to the property about concerns that he had and the, the previous owner had um, operated as an STVR. Uh, and they did not have a permit. Um, they did not restrict the um, number of people coming there, and they didn't restrict the number of vehicles. So, the um, with particularly with uh, with Airbnb and other things, you can restrict the number of uh, people coming, restrict the number of vehicles, and give them kind of the rules of the the property in terms of respecting the the neighbors respecting the neighborhood and not uh, having or not being noisy having a, um, a noise curfew on the weekends at, at 10 o'clock and nine o'clock on the on the weekdays um, the um, the other thing that the, the my neighbor had a problem with is the his the property line between our house is all the, there's just grass and it's right next door um, there's also he has a has a um, his driveway and parking places there are back right up to the house. And it, you'd look at it and think that, well, I guess it goes to this house, but it actually doesn't. So the, um, there was problems with that before. I know the, anybody staying there will be given uh, instructions in terms of not to park there. My, um, I'll put a, a small fence in to, uh, to let people know that that's the property line and definitely let them know that the uh, uh, parking in that area is not, not allowed. Um, let's see, I think, well, the other things that with, um, is in terms of renting a property is, uh, it emphasizing to the guest that again, this is a, this is a community, it's a neighborhood. It's not a hotel where they can party and make all kinds of noise. And that's, uh, that, that is, uh, what I'd emphasize with anybody that stays there. And there are, I can uh, deny people for staying there. There's, uh, um, it's it it with it's particularly with Airbnb, 
we can uh, we can restrict people that uh, stay there. So with that uh, in mind, I'd uh, like uh, like to uh, approve the uh, STBR application. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Opposition now is welcome to come up and make comments. So there's a total of nine minutes. Excuse the apparel, please. I was drafted about two minutes ago. Apparently this meeting was initially scheduled for six o'clock and I was told I was to be here at four o'clock, so I, I was about uh, 3.45. Uh, we're at 729 Old Dallas Road on Robert Bohm. We have been there since 1972. Uh, and the main concerns that we have uh, for our property is just the traffic and the noise. And there's, you know, I heard the uh, plaintiff uh, talk about uh, the proposals that he intends to do. And I heard about the, the driveway. My knowledge, and I'll defer to others more knowledgeable than I, it's just a little circular pull-in driveway, and you do have a two-car garage from the street. I've never been inside the property. I, I pass on a regular basis. But I see a realistic problem if you're going to rent this out on Old Dallas Road or Dallas Road. I think the official name is Old Dallas, but most people refer to it as Dallas. But it's a heavily trafficked road. Uh, it, it's right there by the uh, Normal Park School System. You have the... Uh, apartment complex there, the Cardo, and I always call it the Mansion Hill. I forget, they've been through three or four name changes right there. So there is a tremendous amount of traffic there. That's one concern we have. Uh, the other concern that, of course, we can't deal with, and I don't know if any promises can be made by anyone, is the noise. I mean, that is always a problem that uh, we hope uh, would not occur, but how can anyone uh, pro prospectively uh, get rid and have people promise they're not going to be noisy? Uh, based on those things, uh, those are the reasons that we feel that we would not want to have this designated as a short-term vacation rental. The other thing that would concern me for our neighborhood and the other neighborhoods, and we're seeing a ton of development, as you all are aware, in our area, and I think some of it's great and some of it's not so great, but be that as, as it may, but uh, is a precedent that might be uh, established for having others come in with the short-term vacation rentals. And next thing you know, we're inundated with those. But in any case, that's uh, all I have to say. Thank you for your time. My name is Mike Hall. I live at 1616 Auburndale Avenue. I'm not adjacent to this property, but my concern is what I'm seeing happen in North Chattanooga, as well as other cities around the country, are having big problems because of these Airbnbs. And I'm not opposed to Airbnbs in general, but the neighborhood that I live in in North Chattanooga, I think, is being converted into a hotel, basically. And we're going to lose the full time residents that live there that contribute to the community more than just money. They're contributing many other things by living there and contributing to the community. Um, than just leaving their tourist dollars there. So that's my main opposition to this application. My name's Catherine Daniels and I live at 1318 Sheeran Circle, which is around the corner from the property. So by, um, that short. <laughs> anyway, my, my property abuts it from the back. And I appreciate the fact that he made some comments as to far, far as what he hopes to do. I think my concern is the same as my other neighbors, that uh, we're a neighborhood of full-time occupancy, whether it's full-time rental. Um, there's a duplex across the street from my house. And otherwise, we're full-time occupancy. And so that's why I'm personally opposed to it because I feel like it really doesn't fit within our neighborhood. And, and, and then the trickle down from that is the traffic on Old Alice Road. I have a hard enough time turning on the corner. So the fact that that does have a turnaround is helpful, but still there, it's not a safe area. And then my last concern is, um, and I think this is one as a city, how do we look at it, is what does it do to property values for um, for full-time residences versus people that are renting. 
So um, anyway, I guess my, my last point would be that if you all do approve it, I would ho hope that he would make the modifications that he was talking about, which is communicating this to neighborhood, limiting the number of cars, and making sure that they, um, they follow the, the noise request of 10 o'clock. So thank you for hearing us. All right, thank you. Is there anybody else? Councilman Mitchell? Oh, yes. Sorry. Didn't raise hand. Would you like to uh, make comment on the opposition? Um, I, you know, I understand the, uh, the neighbor's concerns and, and my, my intention here is actually to not, is not to be a bad neighbor at all. Um, again, my plan is to have my uh, daughter and her um, husband to live there in a few years. Um, I do think the um, uh, people can be compliant with the instructions for the STVRs and, and Airbnbs. And the reason is, is Airbnbs have a rating system and you can, the, um, the property owners get rated and the um, guests get rated. And if, if you have problems with them, the, the, the guests can have a bad rating and then they can have a harder time staying, you know, renting another property the next time. So those are the, uh, those are the things. And, the, and the, the thing I told Keith next door is if, you know, if it doesn't work out and it's, not, and it's, it's too noisy and, and, and people are having problems, the, um, I'd be more than willing to, to sell it and move, move somewhere else. And I, I, my intention is not to harm the neighborhood. And I really don't think, it, uh, I don't think this will affect property values at all um, because property values are really based on um, comps and the uh, what property is selling for. And as you know, the property in North Chattanooga is, just keeps going up. So thank you very much. All right, thank you. Oh, excuse me, just, just one moment. Uh, Councilman Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, on Old Dallas Road, I know this house, um, you pull four cars in that driveway, how are you going to get out of that driveway? You're going to back onto Old Dallas Road, aren't you? Yeah. Well, two cars can actually turn and pull, turn out. They can, they can pull through and, and be pointed out. But once there's a car pulled in, you can't really turn around unless right. somebody pulls out. Right. Right. Mr. Chair, or I guess Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Attorney, when we're doing zoning cases, we put conditions on things. Can we even do that with these cases? These are so new that, I mean, can we do that? You, you've got the authority. Of <laughs> Could we enforce it if we do it? <laughs> well, well let, let, me, let me tell you, you're, on, on an appeal, you're supposed to be looking at, in this time, what are the min minimum standards that are required under the code for a short-term vacation rental? And you can consider any health, safety, and nuisance concerns of an owner or agent of the short-term rental. So that's one of the things that you've written in in the code at this point in time to give you some authority. The uh, minimum standards, whenever you're looking at these things, there are 13 minimum standards that are set out in 11.5.12 of the code. And they talk about uh, adequate on-site parking shall be provided as determined by the city after considering the proposed number of guests frequency of operation and availability of on-street parking. So if you're concerned about how that works, I would think that that is a condition you could consider. Okay. But again, I go back to who's going to enforce. If I, if I put, ask for a condition, ask, ask my colleagues for a condition of maximum two cars yes, in the driveway, who's going to enforce that? Nor normally the parking determinations in these matters are determined by CDOT whenever they're looking at the number of people that are supposed to be there. So it's going to have to be conditioned somewhat on the number of people that will be there, how many cars will be there, and, and the parking availability. Okay, I think you just told me we can't enforce it. Well, you'll have someone from either CDOT or the Land Development Office to go out and try to look at that if that be the case. You folks would love having to do that, wouldn't you? I move for denial. I have no other lights, but I do have a motion and a second for denial. So all those in favor of the denial, 
Say aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. All right. Madam Clerk, F, please. A resolution approving short-term vacation rental application number 18 SDVR 00051 for property located at 225B South Seminole Drive. All right. Is the applicant present? Is there any opposition present? None. Councilwoman Coonrod, would you like the applicant to present? There is no opposition present. You would? May the applicant come up, please? Would you like to hear the case first, or do you want to ask a question? Okay. Go ahead. You've got nine minutes. Good afternoon. I'll try to be quick and would love to answer any questions. Uh, my wife and I moved to Brainerd a few, I guess, last, late last year, and we bought two duplexes side by side. And one of those duplexes we live in, and this is four units, two separate structures that used to be on one lot and are now subdivided. And we live in one of the units, and we rent out the other three units, and we're hoping to turn one of those units into an Airbnb or a short-term rental. Um, it is a unit that is one bedroom, one bath, uh, 735 square feet. It's not a big unit. Um, it has one parking space, and I know parking is a concern, uh, but it's only going to ha have a maximum of two people. Um, it is not going to be usable for any sort of parties or events due to its size. It's a, a loft apartment, like it's got a loft, sleeping loft, and a uh, kitchen and a small living room with laundry and, and one bathroom. So it's not even suitable if you wanted to throw a party. <laughs> um, and we live next door. We live uh, probably our front door is maybe 30 feet from the front door of that of that unit. So if anything was to happen, uh, we're not an out of town person buying it from another state, you know, looking to. Uh, wait and move, and we're right there. And if anything happens, we're the ones who are going to know first. Um, and I hope that will provide uh, whoever had opposition to this, because I never saw the reasoning. Um, I never heard, is what I mean. Uh, I hope that will provide some solace, because on the letter you get, as I'm a neighbor, you get a letter that says a non-occupied short-term vacation rental, and I would be concerned as well. Uh, but I think there's accountability there with us living next door that is uh, perhaps not provided in other circumstances. Um, that's all I got. Good. Councilwoman Coonrod? Thank you, Chair. Um, so the complaints, I only received two letters, and one was about parking, and you've addressed that issue. Yes, ma'am. And the second thing was about noise. Uh, they, uh, he stated in his letter that they've had several issues of noise complaints coming from that location. I don't know if you were living there then or what was going on, but what, City Attorney, what did you say about the noise? Uh, the provisions for minimum uh, requirements here is that all applicants will abide by the uh, noise restrictions and waste management provisions of the city code. So uh, can't have noise over uh, an amount that's disturbing your next door neighbors here in, in the place. So you're your own neighbor on that side. So, um, I move to approve. Second. I've got a motion and a second to approve. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Madam Clerk, let's move on to G, please. You need me? Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Councilman Berg. Thank you, Chair. It, I just wanted to ask the question uh, to piggyback off what Chairman Mitchell said. Uh, uh, not Chairman, I apologize. Councilman Mitchell said. Do we have anything clawback wise to where he was asking who's going to uh, somewhat police these situations if someone wasn't parking correctly. Are the neighbors or the people that live around that community can come say, hey, uh, you all put these provisions in place. It's 20 cars out here every other night. It's not three cars out here. You all said three cars is 20. This application need to be denied or withdrawn. Do we have that type of language and we can do that? So yes. in, go ahead, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, in your in your code, you've got the provision in here that if there's at least two documented city code or state lo law violations within a 12 month period, you can actually revoke that permit that you granted. So that ability comes back to you if there's a continuing nuisance problem that exists on the property, then that permit can be revoked. So the neighbors around the community around that. Airbnb can come and say, hey, council, they are not doing what they're supposed to do, and then we have the authority to revoke it, right? 
it's actually got to be a finding of that there have been documented city code violations here. So it'd have to go to court, determine those violations two times within a one year time period. Gotcha. Yes, Thank you. It could be city court yes. or state court, I guess, depending on what the type of violation would be. If it was a general sessions violation, it might be something other. All right, Madam Clerk, Chief, please. A resolution authorizing the chief of the Chattanooga Police Department to enter into an agreement with Convergent Technologies for customer support and maintenance for poll cameras for a five-year period from August 1, 2018 through July 31. 2023 for an amount not to exceed $128,748. Councilman Henderson. Move approval. Right. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Thank you. H, please. A resolution authorizing the administrator for the Department of Public Works to accept reimbursable funds for the recycling pre rebate from the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation, TDEC, in the amount of $32,448. Councilman Mitchell. Move approval. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Thank you. I please. A resolution authorizing the administrator for the Department of Public Works to execute a consent to assignment of all purchase orders for vendor number 855749, Gresham Smith and Partners to Gresham Smith relative to purchase order number 550357 for professional service on call wastewater capital improvements projects. All right, what's the pleasure of the council? I've got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Thank you. Jay, please. A resolution authorizing the administrator for the Department of Transportation to apply for and if awarded accept the Transportation Alternatives Program TAP grant from the Tennessee Department of Transportation to construct the Alton Park Riverwalk connector with the city's portion not to exceed $200,000 for an amount not to exceed $1 million. All right, I've got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed is nay. Thank you very much. Uh, that finishes the items on our agenda. We move down to purchases. Ms. Woodard. Good evening. Good evening. We have three purchases for your consideration tonight. The first two being on behalf of the Information Technology Department. The first being an increase to the purchase order for moving servers, which is awarded to Environmental Systems Research Institute. And the new total amount will be $49,928. Next, we have a new blanket contract for Watson Products Software Maintenance to be awarded to Data Driven in an estimated annual amount of $65,000. And finally, on behalf of the Public Works Department, we have the purchase of salt spreaders to be awarded to CMI Equipment Sales, Inc. in the amount of $48,500. All right, thank you. Any questions? If not, I will entertain a motion. Second. All right, seeing no further lights, I've got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Thank you. Thank you. That takes us to other business. Is there any other business that council would like to discuss this evening? Councilman Gilbert. Briefly, uh, October 9th, the deadline for voter registration is five minutes of registration. And early vote starts October 17th through November 1st, and the last day will be November 6th. So I encourage anyone to go out and vote before when the vote does count. Thank you, sir. Councilman Oglesby. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this month is Disability Employment Awareness Month. so. All this month, there'll be opportunities to visit agencies who cater to helping citizens with disability get employment. And it also an opportunity to celebrate and congratulate those employee, those employers that, uh, that show the, the initiative to, to, to hire citizens with disability. Tomorrow at noon at the Bessie Smith Cultural Center, it'll be a lunch honoring uh, those companies and those citizens who work at those companies who has disabilities. So I'm, if you, I'm encouraging everybody to come out and uh, participate in that luncheon, but also to 
look at some of our agencies that does training of citizens with disabilities. Thank you, Mr. Chair, that's all I have. All right. Thank you, sir. Councilwoman Kinrod. Thank you, Chair. Um, Marie and Mr. Isaiah, I most definitely wanna give you all an apology for my actions. On last Tuesday, I uh, said some things that historically has been said by people who we are used to being oppressed by and I sincerely humble myself and I apologize for that. Um, being the second African-American female to be elected to this seat uh, on city council, it is not becoming of my actions. And before I even ran for office, the people that were in office in leadership uh, positions that looked like you and I, no one extended a hand or an ear to listen or to guide me or to mold me and to inspire me to you know, even be a part of the community. Now that I reside in that same seat, then I need to extend my hand and make sure that I'm doing my part to make sure that you all are inclusive in any conversations and also listening to you as well to make sure whatever your issues are being addressed and that we're also making sure that our millennials are at the table and we're uh, working together on solutions to make our city better for every citizen in Chattanooga. And also, uh, I will say this as well, is that although I traveled a different path to get here, not the same path that my colleagues traveled on, and I'm often labeled or continue to wear a label of my past, so I know exactly what you're going through, Isaiah, because even though that I overcome those obstacles, I'm still reminded daily that even though I sit on the council that a lot of people feel as though I do not belong on the council or deserve a seat at this table. Um, so my focus is to make sure that people with those issues, they know that in fact they belong just like anybody else belong. So I ask of you if you will please forgive me for my actions of my choice words and if we can unite together and work together to move this city in a different direction. Thank you, Councilwoman. Is there any other, other business? All right, I see none, so we'll move on to committee reports. Councilwoman Burrs. No reports. Councilman Burke. No reports. Councilwoman Kinrod. No reports. Councilman Gilbert. No reports. Councilman Henderson. No reports. Councilman Mitchell. Thank you, sir. Councilman Norris, please. All right, very well, thank you. And with that, uh, we will move to the point in our agenda of recognition of persons wishing to address this council on non-agenda matters. Is there anybody here this evening that would like to address the council? Councilwoman, would you like to? <clears throat> Ms. Coonrod, I love you. And my saying is always is I love you and it's absolutely nothing that you can do about that. Uh, disagreements are part of a legislative body's uh, part in trying to figure out how to run a proper government. And the problem that I have is not with you. It's not even just with people who come from the same streets and neighborhoods and experiences and even have the same fleshly skin tone as me. It's also an expectation that I look at Ms. Councilman, uh, Councilwoman Burrs, who has an opportunity to be here because black women supported the women's suffragette movement. You couldn't have got here without the help of people who don't look like you. And there is no America, there is no country, there is no thriving culture here in the city of Chattanooga without the differences of people. The frustrations that I encounter is, is that often I bring and I raise questions and concerns about what is happening in, in, in my neighborhood, what I see happening in my city. Because I want to get to uh, North Shore problems where the only thing I have to worry about is uh, somebody wanting to bring an Airbnb on my street. 
you know, I live in neighborhoods where what I'm talking about, and I'm trying to fight back tears, just being so honest, is we just want a grocery store. We just want to be able to go somewhere and get our medicine. We're talking about basic, basic human dignity and, and a moral respect. Regardless of how a person looks or how much money they make, we're talking about human dignity. And yes, Mr. Gilbert, uh, my people, your people, our people bled and, and, and sweat and fought and died for the right to vote, but they didn't just die for that. They, vote, they, they died for the right for me also to run for government to ensure that certain resources and opportunities are brought back to my community because historically we've been left out of the process. And so what assurance do I have every time I come up here, often people don't even speak to me. They see me walk out that door every single week. And yet and still when you ignore me, yet and still when you, see, you say nothing to me, yet and still you don't shake my hand, yet and still I feel I'm not acknowledged, I keep coming back. Maybe either I'm just stupid or foolish to want to trust and have belief in a government because that's why, that's why America exists is because we want to believe in something more than just ourselves. These issues I talk about are so much bigger than me. I don't have all the answers and I'm coming to you for your help, your knowledge, your perspective, and a seat at the table. If I had all the power, if I had the know-how to figure it out myself, what would I need you for? But I understand that you have a power and we, the community, extended it to you because we trust you that when we do raise these issues under the First Amendment of the Constitution, it says that I can petition my government to redress grievances. What does that mean? Redress means to right a wrong. And that is to right wrongs of situations and circumstances that I did not make. Every choice that you make on this council does not just impact today, it will impact children I have not birthed yet and grandchildren who I have not yet seen. And so it's very, very important that please don't continue, don't continue to do this. Shut the millennials out of the process. Please don't continue to ignore us. We have so much faith in you. We're just trying to figure it out and we're trying to believe when it's all difficult and it's so hard. See my heart my passion, and my pure love for the city of Chattanooga, because this is where I'm from. And I'm pretty sure I'll die here, making it a better place. Please believe me. Thanks, Marie. Is there anybody else who would like to address the council this evening? If not, I will entertain a motion. I move to adjourn. Okay, we're adjourned.